Welcome to another edition of the Sports Guys Weekend Update, another packed weekend of sports. Almost so many sports you can't even follow them all. It's almost like sports overload at this point. How you doing, Robbie? I'm doing great, thanks. Got a little cold, but I'm good to go. All right, you're, you're powering through it, huh? Yeah, I feel way better than I sound. Uh-huh. All right, that's good. So yeah. what were your big takeaways from the weekend, man? It started earlier in the week, of course, uh, with different college and pro games and the fight. Uh, so the fight was a big one. That was kind of the water cooler conversation. I, I knew a lot of girls who watched it. I knew people who weren't sports fans who watched it. So it had 60 million viewers. It, it definitely brought in a lot of people who wanted to watch it outside the sports um, world. So that one. And then um, you know, they, a lot of interesting games. You know, they said about half of those watchers were from outside the United States, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of international. I wonder if Netflix yep. got out of it what they wanted in the fight because they're trying to get into the sports arena. They even have a couple games towards Christmas in the NFL. So they're trying to build a sports catalog. Or if it hurt them yeah. because the buffering was so you know such a struggle for so many people. Well, I think it hurt them because of the technology and the buffering. Um, and also there's a weird thing with boxing. If you look at the track record of boxing, it's not successful. Uh, everybody that has signed deals always runs away from it at the end. NBC, ESPN, all these, all these networks run from boxing. So <clears throat> I think it's really cool the way it pushes eyeballs towards big events like this. And, and actually Jake Paul is quite a master at, at advertising mm-hmm. and creating interest. But at the same time, I think uh, it's a limited space and nobody's building their their empire on boxing anymore. So um, it's an interesting event that he put on that he um, sort of masterfully made into something out of really nothing. Um, if you compare it to other sporting events, most sporting events, huge events get like 20 million viewers. He had 60. So um, that's that's something significant. You make a really good point. I mean, like Thursday night football gets like 18 million, you know, um, yeah. Monday, Monday night football gets about 50 million. This was more than that. Yeah. So I have to think, you know, for a regular event, it would be unsuccessful because of the buffering. But I think in the end, this probably was a successful thing for Netflix just because they're trying to put the name on the map. And, uh, right. you know, there's going to be struggles. They're going to have to give some refunds, uh, things like that. But for the most part, um, you know, obviously they can't afford to do this all the time, but for uh, for kind of their entry into the market, it might have been a good thing for them. And I do think there are cases where um, the, the old saying, uh, all all publicity is good publicity. That might be true here. You know, uh, if if Netflix can come out with statements as to why next time will be better for the buffering, people will probably buy it, tune in. So. You know, I don't want to sit here and say they they sent people away forever. And they'll never try it again. I, I don't believe that. I think they created a really interesting event and people tuned in, and et cetera. And then as far as other things, there was other news events. Um, there was uh, quite a few things that propped up. Uh, great Saturday games, great Sunday games. Um, a lot of things were determined. Some teams were eliminated from playoff picture mm-hmm. that were sort mm-hmm. of teetering. Um, There were other teams that sort of made a better case for it. And a few players have sort of separated themselves in the, in the Heisman race, I think. So uh, that's kind of how I saw the weekend. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it started with a Thursday night football game. I was very sad about the result, but the commanders go down to the Eagles and the Eagles stamp their hold on the NFC East. And they actually um, kind of announced their, their sweepstakes into the possible being in a, a into possibly being in a contender against the Lions. Everyone is assuming the Lions are the best team in the NFC right now, but maybe a close second would be the Eagles. And um, for you know, sure. this was the first time that Jaden Daniels to me looked like a rookie. You know, he really has been just so polished all year. He's been making great throws every week. He's getting you know eighty to hundred yards rushing every week and a couple touchdowns. And this is the first time he really faced a major challenge from the defense. He was rushed on almost every play and just didn't handle it great a lot of the game. And, uh, you know, still still fought hard. Uh, he, he wasn't uh, completely 100% either with the rib. But yeah. um, but uh, I think it was the first time I saw him look like a rookie. 
And, um, you know, clearly he's got some ways to go to be where we want him to be. Right. So that started with that. And then Friday night, of course, you had the big fight, 60 million people. You had the frustrated Netflix customers. But for the most part, people got to see um, this fight that they've been anticipating for a long time. I was kind of wondering why it had been so long before we'd had a big fight. Now I realize the point you made, which is true. And that is that most of the channels have have run away from boxing as, as a viable sport. Nobody wants to pay for it anymore. Even pay-per-view doesn't want to do it anymore. And so the fact that Netflix was able to take this one on is the only reason why they couldn't have this huge purse, $40 yeah. million for Jake Paul, $20 million for Mike Tyson for what was essentially an eight round, two minute boxing match. And only about three of the rounds, it was real boxing. So, um, yeah, I know Jake Paul wants to make an industry out of this, out of his name. And he wants to do a bunch of these. Now he's trying to get Conor McGregor in the ring and all these other people. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm hearing was. about his, his brand is basically as soon as he fights one big name, uh, the moment it's over, he's announcing the next one. He wants to create something that builds on itself. And mm -hmm. that's the way to do it. I mean, that that's marketing genius. I'm sure if you talk to marketing professors, they would say that's that's how you do it. You don't let there be a lull. Um, especially after a fight wasn't great, you'd have to put a little more juice into the next one. But I'm not I'm just not sure fighting all these old people who are past their prime is the way to go. I think he would need to it's, it's hard for him to make interest in boxing um, and create new names when none of them are young enough. So I don't know what he's trying to do. I mean, I can't argue with it. He just made $40 million. So, yeah, I, um, I think that you'll have maybe one of these fights a year at the most. Um, there's still going to be good boxing. I mean, the undercard on this fight was actually better than the actual fight itself. The, yeah, the, no question. The email fight was a really good fight. So, um, you know, there's still going to be good boxing. There's really good welterweight divisions right now. Of course, a lot of these guys are playing for like, you know, $50,000 purses. So, but yeah. the, real boxing. I mean, it's like if you really like boxing, you can find it. But um, I think most of the juice in fighting now, because fighting is still very popular, in some ways more popular than ever. It's gone towards the mixed martial arts type stuff. Yes. That's where all, that's where all the juice is. Dana White. And, and, and they like actually that. have a much more sophisticated uh, apparatus in place. The, the presentation of the fights, uh, the buildup, the training, the, uh, the fighters, the level of recognition of the fighters. They don't have to pull out old MMA fighters to make it interesting. They're making the new ones interesting. So if anybody's doing it right, it's MMA. Mm -hmm. Much better than boxing. And they're and they're filling, you know, Madison Square Garden and, you know, Donald Trump and his whole crew are coming yeah. in there. It's making it more and more popular. Yeah, their presentations uh, are, are much better than boxing, um, but they have a smaller audience. So fewer people want to watch MMA than want to watch boxing. The ones yeah. who want to watch MMA are hardcore, but mm -hmm. the casual fan is a smaller grouping. Indeed. Probably Just always will be, to be honest. So my other stories, so you can see my background behind me, uh, Travis Hunter. I think, um, you know, I thought it was a Travis Hunter, Ashton Genty race all along. Yeah. Maybe with a little bit of some of the quarterbacks mixed in there. But I think um, after this weekend, Travis Hunter is the clear front runner. And actually in Vegas, it shows that all the odds have started to slant towards Travis Hunter being the, the Heisman this year. Yeah. So I think that there's no question. We're going to show here in a little bit some of the clips from that game. And it was – He's just so exciting. He's basically Dion part two. And uh, well, we've been saying it. I mean, those are the two special players of the year and there's, they're good quarterbacks too, but they're not special like this. They're not once in a generation, you know, the next Herschel Walker uh, for Genty. And, you know, there is no player really that fits into Travis Hunter's mold. I mean, I think Dion Sanders is the closest. Yeah. Not really because he played baseball and football he occasionally tried an offensive play, but he wasn't a receiver. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. He was never mm -hmm. a receiver. So mm -hmm. there's really nobody I can think of who played both ways since the early 70s, late 60s. I mean, it just doesn't doesn't happen. Well, you know, I think he hesitated the whole year to do this, but he finally, in this game, he had made so many amazing plays on both sides of the ball. He finally did the Heisman pose, which I think everybody just he, goes crazy about because, you know, it feels like it's towards the end of the season and he's basically saying, I'm the man, you know. I've, I've felt for a while that he was the most extraordinary player in football. Uh, and Genty was a really close second. 
I think if Genty was in any other year, he should be winning it, but I cannot overlook what Hunter's doing. He's ranked, you know, at the top of his division in, in receiving, and he's a lockdown corner, and people are not throwing to his whole side of the field. He's getting picks. He's an unbelievable player. Mm-hmm. The reason he has so few tackles is because they stay away from his side. Mm-hmm. So, I right. mean. Even the interception he made was from a deflection of one of his other guys. They were throwing away from him, and it yeah. was a deflection, and he came back and got it. He so was in story, that play. So. The other big story I had come out of the weekend is the guy also behind me you can see right now, that's Bo Nix. You know, there was a, a feeling that Jaden Daniels was the runaway offensive rookie of the year winner and maybe pro bowler and all of that, and even in the running for possible MVP as a rookie. And some of that has faded the last couple of weeks as he struggled a little bit. And now Bo Nix is coming on and absolutely dominating with, in a lot of cases with not many people to throw to other than Cortland Sutton. And um, he's got this incredible defense. He's got a great coach in Sean Payton. Um, but it feels like a very incomplete roster. And he's taking this incomplete roster on a run right now. It looks like they're going to make the playoffs. And so it's just uh, – it's quite a story to see this young kid who you and uh, of course uh, our friend, um, our friend Zach were saying that uh, was just going to be an incredible rookie and incredible player and was ready to go at the pro level. And you guys really were right. You know, he's really looking yeah. fantastic. So I still think Jaden will be in there at the end, but uh, maybe between these two guys for offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. You may have Those one of the wide receivers. Should be the, the, they were the most prepared quarterbacks for the NFL. And anybody who thought Caleb Williams was the most prepared, um, they weren't really aware of his technique challenges. Colin Cowherd was saying this morning that um, he gets text messages every couple of weeks from Sean Payton and how Sean Payton has been telling him, look, I, the stuff I'm seeing in practice, I can't even believe. We knew we wanted to draft this kid, but – He's yeah. like he's far surpassing everything we can imagine. The way he spins the ball, his athleticism, the ability to run, which we didn't yep. even really know about. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's far surpassing. What, it uh, feels like he's getting better every week, you know? It does. Which yeah, is not does. surprising. Yeah. Not for some of us, anyway. Let's go take a look at what we got. All right, so this is our weekend update, November 18th, 2024. Can you believe it, Robbie? We're just a week and a half away from Thanksgiving. It's going so fast now. (laughs) These are the three stories we just mentioned. We got the fight. We're going to go through that in some detail. We got uh, Bo Nix, and then we got the guy flashing the Heisman pose, Travis Hunter. We'll get into all those stories here in a bit. This is the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. I thought it was pretty interesting to look at the stats among these two guys. Mike Tyson, who actually just turned 58 at the onset of the fight. Uh, Jake Paul is uh, 30 years. He's younger. Uh, Of course, Tyson had 58 fights, 50 wins, six losses, two no contests. He had a total of 44 knockouts in his prime. So he had a lot of incredible fights, obviously. He's uh, 5'10", and uh, his reach was significantly shorter than Jake Paul. So he has a really long reach. Jake Paul had 10 fights, nine wins, one loss. His only loss was to Fury, who's a really good boxer. uh, And he was the only guy he's fought that was actually bigger than he is. So, um, you know, a lot of people were questioning if he fought a real boxer, would he be able to win? And, of course, he ended up uh, outlasting Mike Tyson largely because, in my opinion, he's very old and he just was not in shape for this fight. Yeah, not super healthy. Yeah. Jake Paul's six one, but he's just an absolute monster. I will say he does take the sport seriously and he does train for it. So, uh, you know, people who are saying he doesn't take it seriously, I disagree with that. I think he... He does take it seriously. He's trying to carve out his own little niche, and uh, clearly it's working so far. So, Any thoughts about the stats between these two guys? I mean, Tyson wasn't real healthy going into this, plus he was really past his prime and old. So if they did this fight, they probably should have waited another six months. Yeah, largely because he almost died this summer, right? He almost died this (laughs) summer, which wasn't long ago. So Yeah. They had to call off the fight, and I think they didn't call it off for long enough. I think they were afraid they were going to miss their window. Mm-hmm. So I think they had some kind of deal that he wasn't going to he wasn't going to kill him. You know? Yeah, he must have because he really held up the last couple. He did. 
to take him out. That's why people are a little upset now because it's clear he called off the dogs around the fifth round. Yeah, he could have knocked him out. No question. He, he had lost his legs by about end of third round. Yeah. Any thoughts about having this in AT&T Stadium in front of 70,000 fans? I think the way they did it was perfect, actually. You know, the uh, the presentation. The venue mm-hmm. wasn't technologically up to par, but the hype around it was incredible. And <clears throat> I think just the way they did it was great. Yeah. What was amazing is he has more Instagram followers than Mike Tyson does. <laughs> and, I'm and surprised call, it's that close. Yeah. And they call him the problem child. When Tyson was around, Instagram didn't exist. So I, yeah, that's right. I'm surprised that he's caught up to Jake Paul, who's an Insta guy. You know? He's still got a lot of fans, you know? Yeah. Got a lot of fans. What do you think about this meme here about uh, he has a win in AT&T Stadium and Dallas Cowboys do not <laughs> this year? Kind of an interesting stat there. That's taking shots. I love it. I mean, <laughs> they're not related, but yeah. it's uh, it's quite interesting that Dallas has no wins at home. <clears throat> You'd think mm-hmm. if they had any wins, it would be at home because that stadium is made for Dallas. It's true. They have crazy fans. So in terms of some of the headlines, <clears throat> Paul and his crew, including his brother Logan, who's another boxer, came out to the song In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins, which is the same song Tyson jammed to in the original Hangover film. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Perhaps this is a subtle jab at Tyson, one last taunt before the fight starts. So you remember that uh, some of the scenes that Tyson had in the original Hangover movie? Yeah. <laughs> and him jamming to In the Air Tonight and actually doing the uh, air drums to it. So interesting that they, they play these games. So yeah. then the next one was, why was Mike Tyson biting his glove all the time? He kept biting it. In every round, except for the last round, he kept biting his glove. And uh, there was a lot of speculation about why that was. They finally asked Mike about it. And uh, he claimed that two things. One, he likes to keep his mouth guard tight. But also he said he has a biting fixation. <laughs> Which I think is probably true. Ask a Vader. Have, yeah, he seems to have a biting fixation. <laughs> How does it keep your mouth guard tight? I don't, I don't get that either. I think he just kept pushing it in. Yeah. So it was just, it was weird. It, it Every time they kept showing the close-up of him biting his glove, it was just like, it's just really strange and odd. Didn't quite understand that one. Not sure. Jake Paul beat Mike Tyson by unanimous decision in this fight that was live streamed on Netflix in front of 70,000 spectators at AT&T Stadium. Tyson sent a message to the YouTube star, Jake Paul with his pre-fight soundtrack. The one he used was Jay-Z's Murder Gram as he walked out to the ring at AT AT&T Stadium. Despite being 58, Tyson still has an intimidating presence and highlighted by his quick saunter to the ring, Tyson made his walk to the ring solo without a accompanying group of people. So pretty interesting. He was trying to intimidate him with a Jay-Z song. So I don't know. The whole walkout thing, I guess that's a thing in boxing, right? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I, I think that stuff builds to the pomp and circumstance. I think that stuff's good. Yeah, I agree. It just Tyson couldn't go very long because he's not healthy. You're trying to build some kind of excitement. Yeah. And too old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Both problems. So, so last thing was the final, final opinion piece in Sports Illustrated. Mike Tyson lost to Father Time, not an elite fighter. Did you agree with that? Yeah, I think if Tyson was to run into you in a 7-Eleven and you take a swing at him, he's going to obliterate you because it's going to last less than three rounds. <laughs> but, you know, if if he gets in there and he, and he gets some good shots, he could take someone down. But if you survive him a couple of rounds, I, I don't think he has a chance against a younger fighter. Yeah, I agree. That's just kind of – he's got his little window of time, and if it doesn't happen, then he doesn't happen. It doesn't. He, he refused to say whether he would fight again later, but um, you know. No, I, I heard he said he he was thinking about fighting again. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nobody can just, figure out why. Maybe it's just right after he wasn't wanting to commit to it. Huh. Well, he was talking about the next time I fight. <laughs> so Netflix got hit with Tyson Paul's fight streaming issues. There was a lot of complaints about this. People were really frustrated, like posting out there. I can't get on. I can't get on. I've got my whole family here trying to watch it. 
And then uh, in terms of Netflix, it said that 60 million households watch the fight over their streaming service. Uh -huh. Really an incredible number. It is. You know, even it's, impressive. it's an impressive thing that, that Paul put on, you know? It was. It was. Do you think it's more the Mike Tyson effect? Do you think it's the Paul effect? Do you think it's that we just don't get any good boxing matches anymore? We get them one, maybe every year, every other year. There's no boxing to compete with. So when it happens, it's a big spectacle. Paul has the ability to really um, galvanize uh, viewers to things. And Tyson, I don't think anyone knew how much he had passed his prime. Like I think they thought they've seen him warm up and, and boxing, uh, shadow boxing before so recently. So they're thinking, oh, man, he could get in there and do something. But I think this summer that all changed. And in training, he looked pretty good. So Yeah. I think yeah. this summer when he almost died, I think he hasn't been come back from that yet. That's right. So it's even less than father time, and I don't know if he's going to ever get better, but I think that whatever happened to him this summer, um, well, he, he had a liver he had, recovered from. He had a liver issue and some type of disease, and they had, to bleed, him out. They had to bleed him out 50% of his blood and then put yeah. all of it back in through blood so it was like he almost died literally <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> and then he's fighting four months later that it just seems a little bit of a stretch you know yeah there's no way that he had the stamina he needed to to even try this well we're going to talk about the round by round analysis so this is the first one tyson went to the center of the ring fast and just like in the olden days he landed an overhand right he was the first punch paul makes tyson chase him around the ring which was a smart move trying to wear the 58 year old fighter yeah. out Paul hand, uh, lands a right. Tyson throws a short shot, and then Tyson catches a hard right, and we're off and running. And Tyson won that round nine to eight. So round two, the fighters hold in the center. There was a lot of kind of grasping going on, still doing some measuring. Um, Roy Jones Jr. said in the second round he doesn't like Tyson's legs. He already was seeing some shakiness. Uh, and then there was more measuring and patience. No fighter steps up compared to some other fights on this night. This one is boring so far. And we had Tyson up by 1.1716 after round two. Round three, Tyson gets hit and starts to take some bad shots. He stumbles after a Paul shot. He looks totally out of it. His age clearly starts to show. He's in big trouble. Paul looks so much faster. The difference between a starship and a shuttlecraft and now all of a sudden, Paul's up 25-24. So uh, I think you and I leading into the fight, you remember we talked about it Thursday, we said that the, yeah. this was his chance for these three rounds. Yeah, he had a little window of time, and if he didn't close the deal, he was done. If he was going to catch him, he was going to catch him in one of these three rounds, just because of his legs. Yep. So then round four, Paul was extremely active. He looked comfortable. He was sparring. It looked almost like he was in a training match. He was doing body shots. He was doing head shots. Uh, otherwise, not very much action. Tyson uh, didn't really land anything in that round at all. So Paul's still up in that round. Then we got uh, Paul targets Tyson's chin. It looked like he was trying to knock him out. Uh, he wasn't really hitting, but he was kind of measuring him. Uh, he, he was hitting him a little bit on the body. Uh, and then essentially he kind of backed off. And this is when people started really complaining. You saw a lot of people posting online. Why is he backing off? Why is he backing off? Yeah, finish him. <laughs> yeah, finish him. Exactly. Round six, uh, Roy Jones Jr. said, I think that's all we're going to see from Mike. The feeling is strong. Tyson looks plodding and slow. The booze started to come. So there were a little bit of booze in the fifth round, but apparently they booed almost through the entire sixth round. <laughs> this fight is boring as hell was the summation here. Uh, seven question is why isn't paul taking advantage of tyson's sluggishness who knows broadcast crew expressed something you have rarely heard which was sympathy for mike tyson they actually felt sorry for him he was breathing really heavily and what was weird was after he sat down after round seven on his chair he started to cry a little bit i don't know if you saw that clip but he actually yeah. was, he was actually crying he was emotional after round seven tyson was I think so, it was kind of humiliating, you know? Yeah, I don't know what that was about, but anyway. It was a uh, humiliating round eight, fight. Round eight, Paul jabs Tyson into another solar system. Tyson can't dodge. The reality of age settling in. Paul shows Tyson respect by bowing to him at the end of a 
fight with the final couple seconds, essentially showing him respect. And, um, you know, basically beat him 73-68 and let him off the hook the last couple rounds. So any final thoughts about this? And do you think do you think this was scripted and rigged and all the things people are saying, or is it just... I have no idea. I mean, it's possible. Saying that he respected him and he didn't want to take him out that way. You know? Every conspiracy theory could be possible. Um, but let's just give all benefit of the doubt here. Paul could easily just have felt that Tyson was giving way and he realized he was up in points. Um, they probably have a way to tell him in the in the yeah. when he's in his. Uh, oh, there was corner. no doubt he was bleeding. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, in his mind, he's his corners keeping track too, and he just kind of said, "I don't want to embarrass this guy." You know, it's cool that he was out here. I think the slap might have been staged. Yeah, I think so too. You know, if agree. anything, that that might have been to create interest. That sounds like something Paul might have come up with. I'm I don't not saying that I have any evidence of that. I'm just saying. I don't think this was staged. I think Paul said that that Tyson has been his hero for like the last 15 years. Yeah. I don't. I think he just didn't want to knock out his hero. I mean, I think it's as simple yeah. as that. He couldn't and bring he himself was, to knock out a guy. He was just that so he happy was that he did this fight with him. You know, he gave him this opportunity. Yeah. And I'm sure he knew that there was a good chance it was never going to happen. That's because right. of the health problems this summer. So. That's exactly right. At the end of the day, it was not a great fight. I don't think anybody said that it was a good fight. Uh, yeah. It was an interesting spectacle and noteworthy for sports. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think Paul's going to have to do a whole lot better if he wants to keep the train rolling down the tracks because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people got a little turned off by this one. No doubt. Well, we're going to let you guys decide. Let's go take a look at some of the clips. <clears throat> Just wasn't competitive enough. What do you think? Like I said, you know, I think it's all been said. It's just wasn't a great fight. It was really well put together and marketed and it made it interesting entertainment, but it wasn't, it didn't live up to the hype of it, but oh well. Isn't it interesting when the um, fight doesn't live up to the marketing, which does happen in boxing? It happens a lot in boxing, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see if Tyson fights again. I happen to doubt it, but um, I do think that the Paul brothers have a really good thing going. I think they'll definitely do other fights. Um, it's a different kind of industry. I don't even know what you call it. It's not even really a sanctioned fight. So what do you call it? Exhibition boxing, maybe? Um, Something like that. Entertainment. You know. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining today. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. You guys have a couple of comments challenges we've given you in this show. So we're really looking forward to seeing what you come up with, especially the airline challenge. We really want to see who you would sit next to. So yeah, you guys, uh, have a great evening. and We'll see you next time on the sports guys. Thanks. Take okay. care. Yeah. Yeah.